Photography begins with the feet. For every shot, your point of view is determined by where you and the tripod are standing. You want to pick a location based on how you want the shot to be composed. Composition is the backbone of visual communication. It's founded on three principles, layering, cropping, and framing. In other words, what will we see? How much of it will be shown? And how does one element relate to another? You'll need to be aware of these three principles at all times. Most of us tend to see images on the screen as one flat surface. However, when you're composing the shot, you have to imagine each layer as an individual element. In virtually every picture, there are at least two layers. Here's a stand-up shot. While her framing looks good, there's another important element we need to think about. That's the background. In most cases, the two basic layers of the shot are the subject and the background. We want the background to make sense with the story and hopefully add value. Camera placement can help with that. By moving the camera just a few feet to the left, we can transform this from an irrelevant background into one that adds value. Camera placement will come naturally from paying attention to the images on each layer in the shot and thinking about what's most relevant to the story. Now that we've found an appropriate background, we can move on to the second principle, cropping. The cropping question is, how much of the element will we show? Never cut the human figure at any joints. Instead, crop between the knees and waist, wrists and elbows, or the elbows and shoulders. When cropping objects, avoid showing extra space around them or showing only partial images. This applies to the background, too. The final question is about the relationship between the elements in the frame. Imagine the screen as divided into thirds, both vertically and horizontally. Now as we frame our shot, we keep a golden ratio in mind two-thirds to one-third. The primary element will take up about two-thirds of the screen. The secondary element takes up the last third. You can see all three principles at work in each of these examples. Here, you can see the effect of camera placement on the final shot. In each example, the subject does take up two-thirds of the frame, but the background layer is completely changed by the camera's point of view. You should try to find a background that expresses something about the person and subject matter. For example, if you're interviewing someone in the music business, try to find a background that makes you think music. So, camera placement directly affects the background layer. So does the distance between the subject and the background. Let's take a look. When you move the camera closer to the subject, you need a wider shot to make sure it only takes up two-thirds of the screen. That also means we see more of the background. Conversely, moving the camera further away from the subject shows us less of the background. For large background images, like a building, place the subject closer to the camera and farther away from the background. For small background images, move the camera away from the subject and zoom in. Depth is good and white walls are bad. If you're in a white-walled office, try to find an angle that looks out their office doorway for depth. The kiss of depth is to put someone on their couch against their white wall. There's no depth and any light hitting them hits the wall behind them. It just looks bad. Now we've covered the left and the right and the back and the forth of the tripod. Now let's talk about height. Most amateur photographers set up the tripod so that the viewfinder is eye level to themselves. You should actually keep the camera lens eye level with the subject. Now whatever the tripod height is, make sure it's evenly balanced. To avoid off balance images, check the level gauge on the tripod's head. Ideally the bubble should be at the center of the circle. There. Now the shot is balanced. One final consideration is lighting. It goes without saying that the subject matter in front of the camera needs to be well lit, but you don't want to have big differences in the lighting of each layer. A portable light like this can put extra light on the subject, but the batteries don't last that long and it only works for distances of 7 to 10 feet. Okay, so we are on the road. We have our assignment, typically the reporter that's riding along with me, either is setting up interviews, talking to editorial management uh, about what their thoughts are on the story, what their expectations are on the story, how much time uh, he or she is being given on air, which shows uh, you're going to be on. We have an expert uh, that is going to share their opinion on one side of the story about potential uh, toxic soil that surrounds um, a construction uh, project 
uh, in a nearby community. Lighting and space. In this case, we have lots of lighting coming in, natural light from the windows. I want to take advantage of that if I can, because um, I prefer natural lighting over uh, man made lighting. Uh, we're talking to um, an expert with the legal aid uh, folks. Looks good enough to use uh, books of law as a background. I'll probably put Randy. Right about here. And what you can see is because I'm using natural lighting, I got decent light coming from there. This is a no brainer for me. I don't want to use my lamp if I don't have to because I got it right there. At least, I, at least I have Randy, and guess what? So I'm setting up, and we have a big fire to head to. <laughs> We're in the process of setting up to do the first interview for an environmental story when the phone rings to tell us that there's a fire in the Cajon Pass which is now spreading very quickly. And when these kinds of things happen, particularly if there's any possibility of home being homes being threatened, they will tend to throw a lot of resources at it. So I just got the call that said, we're, we're moving you. We have a breaker. We have a fire in the Cajon Pass, so that's where we're going now. So naturally you have to be prepared for this uh, as quickly as I set it up. I tear it down and I move on.